there, Alaskans, wherever you are. Welcome to the Must Read Alaska Show. Coming to you from somewhere in Alaska. This is the place where we talk about, you guessed it, Alaska. Where we keep the mainstream media on their toes and where we are standing up for what's right in a world run by leftists. You can find out more by heading over to mustreadalaska.com and also checking out the Must Read Alaska YouTube channel for some really great content. But first, let's get this party started. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Must Read Alaska show coming to you from somewhere in Alaska here on Facebook. And later on today, you'll see us on Spotify and iTunes and what else? Uh, We've got uh, Pandora, Alexa app, Google Play, all of the places where you get your uh, where you where you get your podcast. We are there and we are the Must Read Alaska show. We are a force for good. And we try to do the right thing for Alaska every single day. And we appreciate you, our readers and listeners, for coming alongside us to also be a force for good. If you don't subscribe to the newsletter yet, then head to the right side of mustrealaska.com, click on the newsletter, and get yourself on the list. And that way you'll never miss a story. And that goes out three times a week. And basically, it's a compendium of everything that Must Read Alaska has had for the past about 48 hours. And that way you can get yourself caught up. There's always stuff in the newsletter that is not online as well. The little tidbits that are kind of interesting and especially kind of if you're policy driven and you, you like that kind of stuff, you'll, you'll enjoy getting the newsletter. Uh, I would like to thank Shoshana Gung- Gungerstein for Senate for sponsoring the Must Read Alaska show. Shoshana Gungerstein says, Pro re- pro-responsible resource development, open the Alaska oil fields now. And she is our uh, sponsor for our show. We thank her so much. You can learn about uh, her campaign for U.S. Senate at www.gungerstein.com. And that's G-U-N-G-U-R-S-T-E-I-N.com. A little bit difficult to tongue tongue twister for me, but we're really happy to have her uh, sponsoring our show for the second month in a row as she gets her name out and she gets her policy positions out to Alaska's far and wide, and also helps us get our show out to all the nooks and crannies in Alaska. So big show today, John Quick. What is our Nikiski report from the place where y'all live the dream out there in Nikiski? Well, I just uh, got done doing a week-long uh, RV trip with the family in Moose Pass. It was awesome. And uh, back in uh, Nikiski, and um, we're gearing up to for our uh, Nikiski hardware store car show uh, coming at the, to the end of the summer. So that'll be exciting. Is that our second uh, annual one now? It's a third one we've done so far. And uh, last year we had uh, over 600 people come out to the event, which uh, for the Kenai Peninsula makes it probably the biggest, one of the biggest um, free kind of family fun events out there on the whole peninsula. So uh, we're gearing up towards that. We're, we're pretty excited. And then this week I have some fun guests also um, on the Must Read Alaska show uh, further in the week. So tomorrow you're, wa- you're going to want to tune in. I have Kristen Faulkner, who is uh, a force to be reckoned with on the, uh, <laughs> the race biking circuit, like bikes that you like pedal and, uh, you know, think a tour to France kind of stuff. She is uh, from Homer and she is ranked number 14th in the whole world, which is pretty phenomenal. She will get to hear her story tomorrow, but she left a venture capitalist job in San Francisco to pursue her dreams as a professional cyclist, which is exciting. And then on the 20th, uh, the day after that, we have Doreen Lorenz, uh, who is a former Seward City Council member. She's had a couple of uh, talk show hosts over the years uh, in Alaska. We'll get to hear about her favorite interviews she's ever done. And then on Friday this week, we'll have Senator Myers on to share about uh, how his election is going and uh, what he hopes to accomplish this next time around. I'm really excited about this. Kristen Faulkner is a, uh, she's amazing. She's, she's going to be in a tour de France on a, on a team. I don't remember the name of the team, but you'll, you'll remind us tomorrow. And what's really great about this is that this is something you have to do when you're young, you don't get to like work your life and then retire and then do be a, a be on the tour de France. You have to do that one when, when you're young, and then you can go into venture capitalism or whatever. But she's doing it in the right order because some things you've got to do when you're young. If you want to be a professional athlete, folks, you're going to do it when you're young. So uh, it's really amazing, and I can't wait to see how well she does on the tour de France this year. And it sounds to me like you have a really good lineup this um, this week with Doreen Lorenz, who I like, and uh, Senator Rob Meyer from. Uh, from Fairbanks, correct? He's the truck yep. driver, truck driving senator. 
and he's yep. a no nonsense conservative and he's turned out to be a really good senator up there so uh, good for him. We are very happy to have a special guest with us today. And I know everybody is uh, waiting to hear from Bethany Markham, who's the president of Alaska Policy Forum. So Bethany, say hello to the Must Read Alaska Nation. Hello, Must Read Alaska. It's a pleasure to be with um, all of you today. So Suzanne and John, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Bethany has been a friend of the show for a really long time, friend of Must Read Alaska for a long time. And I've known Bethany for many years. And she's she, a couple of years ago, three years ago, you took over, I guess about three years now. You've been. At um, the- it's actually uh, getting closer to five years. It was oh, 2018, heck. so <laughs> I know oh, it's heck. crazy. So wow, yeah. <laughs> that went by fast. And so you've been uh, running Alaska Policy Forum for about you know four or five years now, and it is uh, a gr- another great force to be reckoned with in the state. And you are really taking it places. So, so we wanted to have you on the show to talk about the Alaska Policy Forum and some a, ve- a very exciting opportunity for Alaskans. We'll get to that in a minute. But first, let's just talk about what the Alaska Policy Forum is. For those who don't know, I think we need to start at the beginning. Sure, absolutely. And, and you're, you're right about that because um, I still go places and talk to people and they're like, wait, I've never heard of this before. Really? You've been out there for that long? So I appreciate you giving us the opportunity just to even explain who we are and what we do. So uh, technically we're a think tank, but that just means we're an organization that um, does research and does analysis and then writes papers and puts out data on that information. Some of that information is uh, stuff that's already out there that's publicly available, but we also do plenty of public records requests like you do um, as a journalist to try to get information that we can then analyze and uh, put together policy papers, legislative briefs, and so on. Um, We work primarily on public policy issues at the state level, Um, and those are issues like education, um, welfare reform, uh, the state fiscal condition, um, taxes, health care costs. Uh, we're a 501c3, so we are a nonprofit, just like a church or a food bank. But our goal, what we do, our mission is actually bringing more public policies to the state of Alaska that are going to bring freedom and liberty and prosperity and opportunities for folks in Alaska. But we do that uh, through educating folks. And so this is the uh, Alaska Policy Forum, which is, uh, I think, probably conservative leaning. Would you say that that's fiscally conservative leaning, and you mainly tackle cons, um, fiscal types of things in education, healthcare, but you, you don't get involved in social issues as much. Right. So we fill the, the niche um, that is the free market, um, free enterprise uh, sort of role um, in terms of the liberty side of things. So we really say, you know, we're for, for all things, liberty and freedom. Right, right, right. And so uh, it's been interesting because you've done a lot of good work on things like education, cost of education in Alaska, comparing it to other states. And that's been really informative to lawmakers. And so for people who want to um, to find out more about Alaska Policy Forum, they really just need to, uh, for one thing, visit your website. So let's give them your website. So if they're listening right now, they can go online and look. Sure. It's Alaska Policy Forum, and that's F-O-R-U-M. So alaskapolicyforum.org, O-R-G, organization. Remember, we're a nonprofit. And then on the website there, there is a place where you can sign up for our newsletter um, as well. So you'll be able to get our our newsletter where we highlight some of our stories. Um, And then you can also sign up just to get our our posts delivered to your email um, that we do um, at least a couple of posts every week. Oh, yeah. Very, very good. And I need to get your newsletter. I don't think I'm getting it. So I'm going to sign up right now. So how long has Alaska Policy Forum actually been around in Alaska? Well, we were founded in 2009. Um, And if you remember, that was kind of the genesis of the Tea Party movement at that time, uh, where, you know, the people were saying uh, the bailouts were happening federally and the people were saying we don't want to be the ATM for uh, big companies that are being bailed out that made bad decisions. Um, And so that was really, you know, kind of the genesis of the Tea Party movement in Alaska. And so uh, the policy forum was founded about the same time. Uh, But then, as you mentioned, we underwent a pretty major overhaul in 2018 with a a new mission, a new vision, new board, pretty much everything new, including including me as the um, as the at that time, the one employee. Um, Now we've grown. uh, But uh, so we've been around since 2009, but it is a different organization now. But of course, we're going to continue to evolve and try to serve serve Alaskans better. You've had some really good people involved. I mean, Jeremy. Jeremy, who was it? Thompson. Uh-huh. Thompson, right? At the yeah. beginning, way, yeah. way in the way back machine. We're t- yeah. And then uh, I think <laughs> David Boyle was with the with the organization yeah. that you're running the organization and you're taking it to next level. Is uh, is the Alaska Policy Forum 
associated with other national think tanks? Many, many. Yeah. So okay. we're part of a, a, a network of liberty oriented think tanks around the country. So there's about uh, 60, 65 of these state think tanks that are like ours in other states, you know, like one in West Virginia and one in Minnesota, you know, two or three in Minnesota. Actually. I think there's four in Wisconsin. Um, but then there are also multiple other members of our network that you've probably heard of that are, are more at the federal level um, or that just work on a particular issue at the state level, like Heritage Foundation mm-hmm. is part of our network, the Right to Work Foundation, the Tax Foundation, Leadership Institute, you might, might have heard of as well, um, Center Square. I know that, uh, Suzanne, you've partnered with Center Square. They are mm-hmm. a media arm of our, of our network where they produce um, media pieces, um, Freedom Works. So there's a variety of other organizations that you've probably heard of that are part of this network that we are um, affiliated with. And the direct members of this network all have to commit to not taking any government funding um, as part of their organizational strategy. Mm, I did not know that, that, but that makes sense. It totally makes sense for you guys. You guys are not libertarian exactly, but you're you're probably more on the libertarian scale uh, side of the scale than some other things, maybe. Yeah, yeah so I would say for small L liberty for sure. Smaller. Okay, I got it. Got it. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, we want to talk about this leadership academy that you're starting. So this is a brand new thing. And so the meat of the matter right now is who, what are you doing with this leadership academy, Alaska leadership academy? And then, you know, tell us about what you've got in mind and and we're going to talk about this now. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. So, yeah, so we have uh, just launched applications for the the very first um, annual Alaska leadership academy. And the idea is really just to develop and train um, high quality Alaskan leaders, and that's uh, existing leaders uh, that we already have, you know, serving in some capacity in Alaska, as well as emerging leaders, those who are, are going to be growing into and stepping into a leadership role. And we want to do, do this in the kind of the personal liberty and economic freedom movement. Um, so these are the, the folks we want to move into um, the, the personal liberty space um, and the, the fiscal uh, responsibility space, the limited government space, right? You, you know, you've seen, you've reported on the fact that we have so many um, freshmen and newcomers serving Alaska in the legislature. Um, sure do. We also, yeah. And then the Bronson administration obviously had to fill a lot of roles there. The Dunleavy administration had a lot of roles to fill. So between the, the executive governments and the legislative governments, there's uh, there have been a lot of opportunities for folks to step into roles. Um, but the, there's so many that were freshmen or newcomers that we just felt there was a need for to help develop really strong leaders that are well versed in constitutional principles who can defend and, and help grow Alaska. Well, uh, how many people are you going to actually have in your first leadership academy? I mean, I, I presume that we've got like, you're going to have six or seven different meetings or something like that. Yeah, so it's going to be, uh, this first year is going to be eight sessions. Eight, okay. So eight different months, right? So they'll start in October and they'll go through May. Um, so eight months. Um, year two, we're, we're planning to move to, to nine months. So this, this first year is kind of a pilot project in the sense it's going to be a smaller cohort. So just okay. 10 students is all we're going to select. So it'll okay. be a very small select group. Um, we've had some really interesting inquiries from some folks. So a broad range of people with uh, who he would already consider having leadership experience, but who have a lot to bring to the table, as well as folks who are, are new to the area and who are just wanting to learn about what it means to, to lead Alaska. Oh my goodness. This is going to be a really good opportunity for some people, but it sounds like it's a little bit competitive too. If you have just space for 10 people, you're going to, it's like getting a job and then they're going to have to commit to, to attending the eight of these. Do they have homework with this as well? They do. They have homework and assignments. There's going to be reading. So there's definitely some, some work involved, but the, the outcome for the individual is, is superb. So we've, we've seen this in other states who have undertaken these sorts of leadership academies for their right of center think tanks. And it's been pretty, pretty marvelous to see how folks have stepped up. Um, as an example, one of the folks who went through the leadership academy and our sister think tank in Louisiana, the Pelican Institute, um, was a business owner who then ended up being the individual who was the plaintiff for the Supreme Court decision that ended up getting the um, the strike down from the, the courts regarding the vaccine mandate for companies that have a, over 100 employees, if you remember that. So that was actually uh, one of the graduates of the Pelican Leadership Academy. So these are the kind of folks who really stepped into the, the liberty movement and are really excited about that. Oh, this is great because we have a lot of people who, you know, of course, we 
watch what's going on in the world. And we all have a tendency to want to beat our chests about it and, you know, shake our fists at the sky. But to, in, in order to get involved, you have to understand how things work, how to get, how to be most effective, how to get involved. John, you have questions for Bethany Markham. Yeah. So uh, Bethany, this is pretty exciting. I think that this is a, um, it's a much needed uh, people. <laughs> we, we have a people problem in Alaska. I think this is a much needed solution to that problem. I think it puts folks in the pipeline, just like you said, whether it's a, a mayor that just won an election or a governor, and they're going to have some potential people to draw from. Um, so what is, what's the average candidate look like? I know I've had questions. Can high school people apply? Can, is it just for college? Can, you know, is it for, can middle school people apply? What's your kind of target demographic here? Um, and who, you know, specifically who's it open to? Yeah, so it's really technically open to any Alaskan from anywhere in the state. Uh, But I will say that at least for these first uh, few years, we're probably going to be targeting folks, at at least uh, college graduates and above. Um, You know, eventually it may be the case that we look more closely at um, younger folks and we will definitely uh, want to be training younger folks um, eventually. But like I said, for, for, for now, because we... We want to start where there's the biggest need. And right now, the biggest need is for mature professionals um, who are already in the job market. Right. Uh, But then once we start, get some of, you know, like you said, get a pool of folks trained there in those areas, then we can start kind of moving down into the younger age range. And I I wouldn't say we wouldn't take someone who's in college now. By all means, if we see an excellent candidate who's in college now, then you can be sure we're going to put them in the class. It's just going to be the competition based upon, uh, you know, who has the, the qualities that we're looking for. But really, there's a need for mature professionals. Uh, to get trained in some of these things right now. Um, so I would say that's kind of, you know, really more so that the target population, but any Alaskan we would consider, uh, we're just going to look for those folks who we think have the most potential to be able to do the most good for Alaska. That's awesome. So let's say, you know, I'm a 25 year old listening to this and thinking, you know, do I even have time for this? I got a full-time job. I got, maybe I'm newly married. Um, Walk us through a little bit about what this could practically look like for that person who's contemplating applying. Sure. So for those folks who are in other part of the states, there will be a stipend available for travel and for lodging into Anchorage because the sessions are going to be held in Anchorage. So um, we're asking folks to come in on Friday evening uh, to Anchorage, and then there'll be a networking reception on Friday evening. So no course content necessarily. There'll, there'll probably be a few sessions where there might be some lighter course content, but in general, the purpose of the Friday evening sessions is, is networking because we want, uh, we know that one of the ways that you can grow as leaders is by being around and sharing with other strong leaders. And so we want uh, there to be uh, this opportunity to develop this uh, this strong cohort of leaders within the state, um, starting with this first uh, group of Alaskans who will be in the the Leadership Academy. Academy. And then then you're going to have alumni groups as you go to subsequent years. So we'll start on Friday evening with the networking reception. Then Saturday, the coursework is going to be from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. That will give folks the opportunity to then um, fly home um, or drive home, depending on if they're local, uh, back to uh, their home places and spend the evening with their families and then spend uh, the Sabbath, you know, with their families on Sunday. Uh, But so it's, you know, there's going to be, you know, pretty much a full one day commitment once a month. Uh, But then in the the interim, there will be some homework and assignments, reading that can just be done um, on, uh, you know, a working it in your personal schedule sort of basis. Interesting. And so, uh, so, so this is, um, this is something that people are going to have to think through because that, that is a big commitment and uh, you are, you know, it's, there's, it's just not just a free lunch and they, they can't just, we don't, we don't want to see any dropouts for the leadership Academy. That would be bad. <laughs> so it's a, an eight, eight month commitment and you have to come in once a month to Anchorage and you're going to meet some people like yourself and they're, they're going to, you're going to have a, a lot of camaraderie and that, then you'll have a sort of a leadership. This would be a, a class. A peer will, group. Yeah. You'll have a peer, peer group. group. Yeah. Yeah. A peer group. We're, going to be bringing in, we're going to be bringing in speakers from around the country. So this is going to be oh, worth wow. your while. This is a, these are going to be some, some nationally, uh, um, you know, rounded experts that are going to be able to come in and, pro- and provide you with training that you wouldn't be able to get elsewhere. Really? Okay. So, so give me an example of like a topic on a Saturday that if I signed up for this, just not, not just, uh, I, well, obviously there'd be many topics, but like, just give me an example of one. 
Yeah, so one of the uh, um, presenters that we've already secured, um, her name is Beverly Halberg, um, and she is a media expert. She's a former uh, TV host, um, I shouldn't say TV, TV news presenter and, and a reporter and, and that sort of thing at the national level, but uh, she's a media trainer now. And she does media training within the, the, the Liberty Networker movement, as you would say. And um, so she will be doing on-air uh, media training for folks. So they'll be getting communications training. She goes over lots of communications pieces. And then she, uh, she actually gets folks. I mean, she, she does this for, uh, you know, the, the U.S. senators and U.S. Uh, representatives. So she's very good at this and she does what she does. And um, she sits folks down one on one and she will be interviewing you just as if you were being interviewed in front of a camera or a radio reporter. Um, so it's an extremely um, interactive process. And then she uh, is able to kind of take you to the next level of your ability to, to speak to the media, answer questions, stay on point with topics and such. So that's the kind of expert we're going to be bringing in and the kind of training that will be available to the folks who get selected to this program. Well, I tell you, that in itself would be worth it to people because in Alaska, we don't have that kind of opportunity. That's just not out there where you could actually get media training from a professional so that you can practice, have some real practice uh, in front of somebody, and then they can coach you about sort of here's how you want to present. Here's the things that I'm seeing that you're doing. Oh, did you know you had a little tick here and you just (laughs) might want to do a course correction there? Because uh, you don't know how you appear to the media unless is that a dog barking that in the background, John? Yeah, there's probably moose your, in my yard. Is there a moose in your yard? Okay, <laughs> only in Alaska. On our <laughs> podcast, we have moose in the yard and we've got dogs <laughs> on the ready. And um, so this is pretty this is good stuff. So everybody that I know would benefit from <laughs> some media training. Myself, John, you, we'd all benefit from media training. So this in itself is very exciting because when you grow leaders. Uh, we see them, this deer in the headlights with the, uh, the camera. We see the inability to kind of get their thoughts out. And this is going to give people something really s- to start working on with themselves. Great personal development. Absolutely. Yeah. And then beyond the personal development, there's going to be content that is a more specific to uh, you know what we care about in terms of the policy world. So the constitutional principles of our country. So how do you, um, as a leader, uh, make sure that the things that you that you are concentrating on are regarding individual rights and limited government, um, you know, separation of powers, those sorts of things. There's going to be training on the constitutional principles as well. Well, let's talk about uh, how people can apply and what the deadline is, because uh, we want to get that out there to people. Sure. So um, the address, uh, email, I'm sorry, the website address that I gave earlier, um, alaskapolicyforum.org. If you just do forward slash ALA for Alaska Leadership Academy. So alaskapolicyforum.org forward slash ALA will take you to the web page for the Leadership Academy. And on that page, you've got all the information like regarding the dates. Um, that we're putting out there, um, as well as a link to the application form. Um, applications are due August 10th. So um, we just launched this last week. So you've got a few weeks to get things together, fill out the application. Um, and you do need two letters of reference, two letters of recommendation. So those are also due on August 10th. And so then you can just email all those documents to us. And we're going to then start the process of um, uh, you know, choosing the applicants and then allowing them to get flights and hotels booked um, and uh, excited to, to launch the first class in October. October 15th will be the, uh, the first weekend. So uh, reception the 14th and then the first day of class, October 15th. This is so nice. exciting. Yeah, well, this I, is so exciting. I was just going to, I think this program is awesome, Bethany. And one of the things that Suzanne and I see all the time whether it's on comments and Facebook and messages, you know, we get literally thousands of comments every day is the, uh, one of the themes is how do we get involved? What do we do? How do we make a difference? How, you know, there's not many opportunities in Alaska for folks that are listening. This is the opportunity you've been waiting for. So no longer can you sit by and say, well, we just don't have that cool stuff in Alaska. And it just, you know, it doesn't ever come up here and I don't know what to do. This is what you do. You get off your butt and you go to your computer and you go to the website and you apply. And, you know, the worst case scenario that could happen is maybe you don't get in the first year. But I think that you, you know, I think and I hope that you're going to be flooded with amazing applications because this is an opportunity that Alaska has not seen before. And there are so many folks that sit around and just 
they don't know how to get involved and it's not their fault. They don't know how to get involved. We don't have good systems for folks to get involved. This is your foot in the door folks, not only with things that are, you're going to have opportunities in Alaska through this uh, program, but you're going to be trained by some of the best of the best from around the whole United States. And it's going to be a whirlwind. And this is a place where there are no more excuses. Jump in, jump in. It's going to be fun. Everybody, this is going to be, uh, this is a good one. Yeah. You won't regret it. No, you won't regret it. Bethany, what else is the Alaska policy that we're working on? Oh, we're looking a lot at the state budget right now that was uh, passed and signed. We're kind of digging into that and doing comparisons between it and previous years, um, seeing what changes happened um, to the budget. We're also doing uh, some work on um, exposing some of the spending that has happened in the state school districts. So we've done open records requests from the school districts, and we're analyzing some of that data to see how they're spending their their funding. Um, You know, just this morning, I heard on uh, the radio, the uh, Anchorage School District is sponsoring the uh, Alaska Fishing Report. (laughs) It seems like an interesting use of government money to sponsor a fishing report for the school district, right? Uh, they're, they're hurting. Some of the school districts are because um, to, uh, parents and families are choosing alternatives other than their public school. Right. And so we're going to look at how they're spending that money because they're, they are, they're definitely feeling the impact. Interesting. Well, I, um, I, I had no idea, but I do have an idea that we do spend an awful lot of money per student. And when I went to school, our, our schools in Alaska were the second best in the nation. And now they are the second to the worst in the nation. And that's just in a couple generations here. So we are not, we're doing stuff that isn't working. And, you know, it was working. It's not working now. So, well, we all know that. That's another a topic for another day. But we will get back to you on that. We want you back on the show. And we want to um, to make sure that uh, we kind of catch up on how this Leadership Academy is going. And I think once you get started with the Leadership Academy, we want to hear back from you about how it's going. Absolutely. So it, for everybody, we're kind of winding up here. If you're a supporter of Must Read Alaska, thank you so much. Make sure you go to www.gungerstein.com and check out Shoshana Gunder, Gungerstein for uh, Senate. She is the sponsor of our show, and she's got a lot to talk about in in terms of her um, campaign as an independent, nonpartisan candidate for the Senate. Thank you, Shoshana Gungerstein, for for sponsoring the Must Read Alaska show. And if you'd like to support the conservative side of the news, well, just hit that donate button on the right side of Must Read Alaska. costs a lot to put a podcast together and a newsletter and a website. Trust me, this is a a pretty um, expensive enterprise. Bottom line, costs about, well, at the the minimum, $70,000 a year to to keep this enterprise going. So we appreciate all of you who do support us. Thank you so much. And John, you've got the podcast uh, tomorrow and you said you had, um, uh, I believe Kristen Faulkner tomorrow. Is that right? Yep. Kristen Faulkner will be tomorrow. She's uh, ranked number 14th in the world for uh, competitive cycling. She's going to be, uh, she just won a stage in the tour to Swiss and uh, she is going to be hitting the tour tour to France here, I think this week or next. Uh, you know, yeah, it's coming, coming right. Up you, so I'm going to be listening to that. And um, oh, lost my lost my earbud here, everybody. And, then, and we just we, we just did an article on her too for those folks that are listening who who don't follow cycling, which we don't blame you if you don't. You can just go to our Facebook and it's pinned to the top there. It kind of gives a little spiel on her to check out what she's doing. A lot of cyclists in Alaska. A lot of them are uh, downhillers down up at uh, Alaska. They, t- they take their bikes to the top and they, they just go bombing on down the mountain. John, uh, who who won our, our extra tough giveaway this week? I mean, you had somebody from Homer win it and she, she got all kinds of swag. What's the deal yep. on that? Yeah, so that was pretty exciting. The CEO of Extra Tough, actually the CEO of Rocky Brands came on, which is a publicly traded company a big company who happens to have one of their brands is extra tough. So he's acts as the CEO of extra tough. They were on the podcast last week and he was a blast. And one of the things they did is they wanted to do a giveaway with our listeners, which was very gracious of him. And so he uh, said he was going to throw in a pair of boots, a sweatshirt and a couple koozies. And so we had probably 1600 people enter that competition, which is a lot of folks. We had probably 10,000 people interact with that post or, or so. And uh, so Laura Camp won that from, yeah. uh, I from think she's Homer. in Homer. Yeah. And she's very excited. She's been notified. We're in communication. People are always very concerned about making sure they're like, 
you know, making sure the person gets the winning. So we have made sure that the person will get the winnings and they're very excited. Well, Bethany, if you have any uh, any swag you want to ever give away, just let us know. And we'll we'll uh, get you on the show. And we'll do a giveaway with your your Alaska Policy Forum koozies. We can do that. We can do that. We've got st- <laughs> we've got swag. You got swag. I know you got swagger too. Well, for everybody, thanks again. Until next week, we're signing off now from somewhere in Alaska.